Mei Lin is a 13-year-old Canadian teenager. Her mother is of Chinese descent and is extremely controlling. Her family motto is, honor your parents. After all, they are the supreme beings who gave you life. In Mei Lin's mind, the least she could do to repay them for everything they do for her is obey them in absolutely everything. Of course, this philosophy can be a bit controversial. If you care too much about pleasing and honoring your parents, you may end up not honoring yourself. But, according to the girl, she doesn't have that problem. Since she turned 13, she's been her own person. Mei Lin just does what she wants and doesn't mind looking ridiculous doing a somersault out of nowhere in the middle of the street. Along with her friends, Miriam, Priya and Abby, the girl was ready to take over the world. After school, the girls always go to check out the clerk at the nearby convenience store. Devin is the dream boyfriend of Mei Lin's friends, but the girl is more interested in the boys of Four Town, an all-male pop band. The trio invite Mei Lin to go to karaoke, but the girl claims she needs to help her mother, Ming Li, with the cleaning. The girl says that while she makes her own choices, like most other adults, she also has responsibilities and taking care of the temple together with her mother is one of them. Her family runs Toronto's largest Chinese temple. And it all started with Sun Yi, the guardian of Red Pandas and Ming Li's ancestor. After cleaning the temple, they prepare to welcome visitors. Melin wears her red panda costume as her mother explains that since her ancestor's death, the animal has blessed her family with great luck and prosperity. After business hours, they return home and watch TV while Jin, Meilin's father, makes dinner. During the commercial break, the girl discovers that her favorite band, Four Town, will start their new tour. She is excited by the news, but Ming soon cuts Meilin off, judging her taste in music. After dinner, while doing her homework, the girl gets distracted and starts drawing a boy in her notebook. Soon she realizes that that doll looked like Devin and crawls under the bed to continue with her perverted drawings. Minutes later, her mother appears in the room and the girl jumps into bed. However, she soon realizes that the notebook was not hidden. Ming decides to look at what the girl was doing and finds drawings of her. The woman soon recognizes the boy and decides to go to the convenience store to teach him a lesson. Mei Lin is desperate, she tries to stop her mother at all costs, but fails. Ming goes to the boy and shows Devin his daughter's drawings. Several other boys approach to know what was happening and the boy is scared to see that. The woman orders him to stay away from Mei Lin and then leaves. When she gets home, the girl is still in disbelief. She can't believe her mother made her feel so ashamed. After freaking out for a few minutes, she promises it would never happen again and tries to sleep. That rainy night, Mei Lin had several nightmares, which included the temple, Devin and even the four town boys. When she wakes up the next morning, she goes to the bathroom and, looking in the mirror, cannot understand what is happening. Suddenly, the girl turned into a giant red panda. Mei Lin screams and her mother runs to the bathroom. She knocks on the door and asks what happened, but the girl doesn't want to say. So Ming concludes that her daughter has become a woman and runs to get some basic items. Mei Lin tries to escape through the window, but not even her head can get out. When her mother enters the bathroom, she hides behind the curtains. Out of nowhere, the woman appears with cramps medicine, a hot water bottle and pads. The girl tries to get her out of there, but Ming is about to open the curtains. However, Mei Lin is eventually saved by the fire alarm, which it goes off after the woman forgets her porridge in the oven. The girl takes the opportunity and runs to her room. She believes that she just needed to go back to sleep, and once she wakes up, it will all be gone. Gradually, the girl calms down and the panda disappears. First the ears, then the tail, then her whole body returns to normal. Except for one thing, her hair was red. Her mother prepares to take her to school and the girl wears a cap to hide her new look. When she enters the school, she tries to remain calm. Otherwise, her monster would reappear. However, her plans go awry when Melon finds dozens of posters tacked to the wall with the drawings she had made. Taylor, one of her classmates, was responsible for that tasteless prank and Melin intends to pay back. But she gives up on that idea when her fist turns into a clump of fur and her tail appears. The girl runs to her class and tries to control herself. Miriam approaches and asks what's going on, but Mei Lin claims she's just looking forward to math class. During class, Miriam warns the girl that her mother is snooping around outside the school. One of the guards asks what she is doing and the woman soon attacks him. The man tries to hold her and Ming runs to the window screaming for her daughter. The whole situation was to deliver the tampons that the girl had forgotten. At that moment, an explosion happens. Mei Lin can't contain her emotions and completely transforms into a red panda. The students were attentive to the window, so she manages to escape unnoticed. But the woman sees everything that has happened and goes after her daughter. She goes into the bathroom to hide and soon discovers that there was a girl inside. After escaping through the window, her mother gets in the car and tries to catch up with her. The clumsy panda destroys everything in its path. 
After passing through a narrow alley, she passes by the convenience store and is almost spotted by Devon. Minutes later, after causing some confusion and accidents, Mei Lin finally makes it home. Her mother appears next and when she enters the house, she realizes that everything is destroyed and the girl is in the room crying. Jin appears shortly after and asks if the transformation has already taken place. When she hears this, Mei Lin is surprised. At that moment, she realizes that her parents knew something they didn't tell her. The three then walk to the temple and Ming reveals that hundreds of years ago, her ancestor asked the gods to change her into a red panda so she could save her daughters from the war. One night, during the red moon, the gods granted her wish and gave her the ability to master her emotions to transform herself into a powerful mystical beast. In this way, the woman was able to fend off the bandits, protect her village, and save her family from ruin. A few years later, Sun Yi passed this gift on to her daughters. Later they also passed it on to their daughters and so on. However, the world has changed and what was a gift has become a curse. Upon hearing this story, Mei Lin is filled with hatred and tries to destroy the image of her ancestor. But her parents manage to calm her down and reveal that there is a cure. Her mother had also gone through that and says that the only way to get rid of that curse is to perform a ritual to seal the panda's spirit during the red moon. Ming's panda was sealed in her necklace and she intended to do the same with Mei Lin. That way, the girl would be cured forever. The problem is that the next red moon would not happen until next month. Until then, the girl would have to hold back her emotions as much as possible, as any strong emotion could unleash the monster. Her parents then put the girl's mattress in an empty room so there would be no further accidents. As the couple leaves the room, Mei Lin hears her mother saying that she was scared. Her sadness is so great that she turns, again, into that panda. The next morning, as Ming vacuums up the hairs on the floor, the girl tries everything to make the monster inside her disappear, but to no avail. A while later, her friends appear at her bedroom window and tell her that Four Town is going to perform in Toronto. At that moment, Mei Lin opens the window and pulls her friends into the room. The girls are desperate to see her like that and the panda tries to calm them down. To her surprise, Priya and Abby are delighted with their friend's new appearance and say she looks very cute. But Miriam wants to know what happened to the girl. Mei Lin tries to explain that one day she will be back to normal, but she can't hold back her tears. Abby informs that the performance will take place on the 18th of the next month and the Red Moon would only happen on the 25th. Therefore, Mei Lin could not attend the show. Seeing her friend sad, Miriam starts singing one of the girl's favorite songs and the other girls continue the rhythm. Quickly, the panda gets into the mood and starts to cheer up. Her friends hug her and Mei Lin reverts to her original form. At that moment, the girl realizes that she managed to control her emotions and that would allow her to regain her life, in addition to going to the long-awaited Four Town concert. The girls agree to ask their parents to let them go to the show. Ming approaches the room and Mei Lin asks her friends to leave. At that moment, she tells her parents that she learned to control the panda and allows them to test her to prove that she is telling the truth. They show her several images that cause strong emotions in the girl, but nothing is able to make her transform. As a last resort, Jin hands Mei Lin a box full of cute kittens, and this time, the girl can barely contain her excitement. However, when she is about to give way to the panda, she envisions her best friends and manages to return to a calm state of mind. Her parents are in disbelief and ask how she managed to control that beast so fast. Then, the girl reveals that when she starts to get emotional, she thinks about the people she loves most in the world and manages to calm down. Ming is proud of the girl and hugs her, believing her to be one of the people she loves most in the world. Mei Lin takes advantage of this moment to ask permission to go to the show, but her mother immediately denies it. She says that in a concert the girl would be consumed by emotion and wouldn't be able to control herself. Jin tries to convince Ming to trust her daughter, but the woman claims that she trusts Mei Lin, she just doesn't trust those delinquents who would come forward. Finally, Ming states that there will be no show. Despite her displeasure, the girl thanks her parents for listening to her, packs her things and leaves. A few minutes later, the phone rings and Jin informs Ming that her mother wants to speak with her. The woman answers the phone and the old woman informs her that she heard about Mei Lin's panda through the news, so she was going to Toronto. Before the woman can say anything, her mother hangs up the phone. The next day, during their gym class, Mei Lin discovers that none of her friend's parents have allowed them to go to the show. Mei Lin sees that her mother was still watching outside the school and Tyler started to make fun of her. The girl then uses her panda arm to throw the ball right in the boy's face but he barely manages to dodge it. The girl is kicked out of the game and her friends take her to the bathroom to calm down. There, they agree to say that they will have a sleepover at home and, thus, they can sneak to the show. Now they had to find a way to get money for the tickets, each of which cost $200. Abby says seeing the panda could spark her creativity to think of ways to get that money. 
But just as Mei Lin transforms, some girls from her class enter the bathroom. The girl tries to hide, but it's too late. Her cover was blown. To the surprise of the four friends, those girls really liked the red panda and were even willing to pay to see him. That's how the plan to get the ticket money was put into action. They started charging to allow students to take a picture with the panda. Then they started selling custom t-shirts and accessories. Gradually, the friends were managing to gather the money needed for the four tickets. However, there was still $100 to go and the show would be that Saturday. Just then, Tyler appears and asks Mei Lin to go to her birthday as a panda. Only then would his classmates be interested in going. The girl immediately denies it, but he says he's willing to pay for her presence. Mei Lin charges $200 for the job and the boy accepts the proposal. When she was getting ready to leave the house, with the excuse that she was going to participate in a study group, her mother offers to accompany her. The girl tries to change her mind, but Ming wouldn't miss the opportunity to keep an eye on her daughter. As they are about to cross the gate, they see the seniors club arriving. Melin's grandmother arrives in Toronto with her sisters to perform the panda sealing ritual. Meanwhile, at Tyler's party, all the guests were impatient for the panda to arrive. Melin was 40 minutes late as her great aunts wouldn't leave her alone. In order to get out without being noticed, the girl says that she is going to sleep. She puts some stuffed animals under the blanket and prepares to go out the window. But her grandmother enters the room just then and reveals that she found a tuft of fur in the backyard. The woman advises her granddaughter not to let that beast out again, as every time this happens, the panda gains strength and it becomes even more difficult to get rid of it during the ritual. A few minutes later, Mei Lin shows up at the birthday in the panda costume worn at her family's temple. Everyone is disappointed as they expected to see the real panda. Tyler claims that if the panda didn't show up, he wouldn't pay the $200. Seeing her friend's sadness at not being able to go to the show, Mei Lin decides to ignore her grandmother's advice and transforms into the red panda, driving all those teenagers crazy. After having a great time with the guests, the four friends gather on the roof of the house and eat cake while celebrating that they would make it to the show. However, the big dream comes to an end when the radio guy informs that Four Town will be in Toronto on the 25th and not the 18th, as Abby had said. She had mixed up the dates and now Mei Lin couldn't go to the show as it would be on the same day as her ritual. Luckily for Ming, her mother and aunts decide to stay at a hotel. After they leave, the woman goes to her daughter's room and sees the window open. When she goes to close it, she ends up stepping on a shard of glass on the edge of the bed and, when she bends down to pick them up, she finds several photos and objects related to the red panda. The woman tries to wake Mei Lin up so she can explain what those things are and then realizes the girl wasn't in bed. Back at the party, the girl was freaked out that she wouldn't be able to go to the show with her friends, Tyler orders the panda to play with the guests again and Mei Lin gets even more annoyed. He claims that the contract is over and he would no longer pay what he had agreed. Finally, he still says that the girl is just as weird as her mother. That was the last straw. Mei Lin loses control and attacks the boy. Ming arrives just in time and asks his daughter to release him. Tyler starts crying and all the other teenagers are scared of the panda. The woman still listens to a lecture from the idiot boy's parents and then blames the three girls for their daughter's misbehavior. The woman claims that they are bad company for Mei Lin and, after what happened, the girl doesn't have the courage to confront her mother to defend her friends. A week later, the big day arrives. Miriam, Abby and Priya buy their tickets to watch the show while Mei Lin prepares for the ritual. At her mother's request, the girl goes to change and her father notices that she is not happy at all. While storing some items in the basement, he finds a camera that Mei Lin used to record videos with her friends. Jin notices that she was being overjoyed with the panda and laughs at the choreography. Then he goes to his daughter room and asks about the videos. He says that Ming's panda was the biggest of them all and completely out of control. The man reveals that he has only seen his wife's transformation once, during a fight between her and her mother. Ming's mother didn't think Jin was good enough for her daughter and tried to forbid her to marry him, but Ming confronted her. Mei Lin confesses that she wants to keep the panda, but she doesn't want to be seen as a monster. Her father then advises her not to try to ward off bad things as everyone has different facets. Some pleasant, some not so much. The secret, according to him, is to embrace them and learn to live with them. At that time, Ming appears and calls them to start the ritual. The shaman makes a circle on the floor and asks the girl not to leave it. As long as the red moon shines, the astral plane would be open and that was the door. The women sing and the circle begins to glow. When the red moon reaches its height, Mei Lin is sent to the astral plane, where she meets Sun Yi, her ancestor. The woman's spirit uses a red sash to create a mirror. When the girl tries to cross it, she realizes that the panda's spirit is being ripped from her. She struggles to get to the other side, but just as she is about to get rid of the beast, the girl remembers all the good times she had as a panda and decides to return to him. 
Her mother approaches and tries to calm her, the woman asks the shaman to restart the ritual, but Mei Lin says that she will keep the red panda. She tries to leave the temple, but her parents, her grandmother and her aunts hold her back. She then tosses them away and says that she is going to see the show. The impact causes a crack in Ming's amulet, which contained her panda. The woman's hatred is so great that she ends up releasing her sleeping beast and it turns into a dark beast. Mei Lin uses her transformation skills to get to the show faster and soon finds her friends. As she approaches, she reveals that she couldn't get rid of the panda as the animal is part of her and apologizes for not being by the girl's side. They hug and everything is fine, until Mei Lin's mother starts approaching the concert. As soon as the band starts the performance, the giant panda appears and destroys the place looking for the girl. Jin and the seniors club arrive at the scene and try to calm the creature. But the monster takes the girl and the man runs to draw the circle around her. Ming destroys the four town sign and Mei Lin is very angry. She transforms into the panda and bites that thing's finger. As the girl catches her mother's attention, the rest prepare to begin the ritual. The old shaman climbs into the stands as the ladies gather around the circle to sing the song. Despite being infinitely smaller, Mei Lin manages to headbutt her mother, hard enough to knock her down. The woman hits her head and is unconscious, but half her body is out of the circle. Mei Lin tries to pull her inside and her aunts join her. The women break their amulets and unleash their beasts. All together they get enough strength to pull Ming into the circle as they sing. However, the music isn't loud enough, so the four town boys and Mei Lin's friends lend a hand. The ritual begins and they are all sent to the astral plane. There, Mei Lin meets the younger version of her mother, who was crying with regret for hurting the girl's grandmother. Apparently, she was the one who caused that scar on her forehead. The woman says that she will never be good enough for her mother or for anyone else and Mei Lin says she feels that too, but that wasn't true. The girl takes her hand and guides her to the portal. Arriving there, she finds her grandmother and her aunts and Ming takes the opportunity to ask her mother for forgiveness. Together they all cross the portal, except Mei Lin, who now, more than ever, is determined to continue with her panda. Sun Yi's spirit picks up the girl and takes her under the moonlight, where they say their goodbyes. At the end of that tragedy, all that was talked about everywhere in the world was about the apocalyptic panda. Mei Lin continued to work with her mother at the temple and helps attract even more visitors with her panda transformation. Everything was going very well, and if it continued like this, very soon they would have enough money to rebuild the place. Now her mother didn't stop her from going to karaoke with her friends and even invited them to dinner. Ultimately, Mei Lin understood that everyone has their inner beasts and chose to let hers out. 